let me just highlight what happened here. So uh, this happened C5 E3. So it starts with a sort of a terrace but goes into a queen's gambit accepted structure. Yes, knight c6, e3, takes takes, e6, castles, b5, bishop a2, bishop b7, and, and here white opted for queen e2, and then black bleeds the out to move queen c7 immediately. And okay, it's a bit, a bit confusing, and, and look d1, look d8. Okay, this is, I think, the old classical way. Yeah, this is the very old classical way how black is playing but I thought like there were some new tactical directions with C takes D4 and then B4 those are the modern lines uh, yeah and Tadeas is mentioning that yeah we are in the Nepo Leipo game from 2015 it, it was in Skopje and uh, I remember this game very well it, it was a very nice strategical finesse so in fact you know my mind because it's so much into the modern forced line speed uh, let me just highlight yeah, the after PD2 I think it's C takes D4, Rook D1, and then B5, B4. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an idea that I played in 2018 against Boris Gelfand in Olympiad. And uh, at that time it was kind of a novelty, but Boris was also very well prepared. Uh, and I came under some uh, pressure by not remembering the final point of my analysis. Uh, the reason why I got confused that I never had this position from the white side. I always think it from the black side and it looked so different, right? That, that, that was the trick. But in fact, yeah, this is a classical traditional position. Queen e2, queen c7, rook d1, rook d8, white goes d5, takes, and uh, knight the question how you usually they take with the knight. Yeah, knight takes. On the board. And all the trades have happened. Hans looked a little surprised with this decision that 3M took. Uh, Peter, I think the speed with which Hans is playing one can feel that it is part of his prep and uh, he sort of knows he's still in familiar ter territory. I did see on our camera uh, him yawning a couple of times. It looks like Hans hasn't had much sleep and uh, yeah, it's understandable. And I, I, I want to just take this opportunity, Peter, to also just our chat that I understand with the situation we all want to speculate we all want to talk about what's happening but also let's not forget just to try to do that but with kindness yeah of course I mean okay basically ever since we heard Emil Sutovsky when he joined the pre-show and he mentioned that Nafida is uh, taking this uh, matter very seriously and they will be coming out coming out with statements and they are dealing with the situation I think more or less that's the moment when it ended for me and yeah, that there is just no need to speculate, it's not our job to speculate, we are here to commentate the games.
it exactly went along the lines that we discussed after d6, knight c6, takes, takes d7. So we, we already spoke that uh, rook d8 runs into bishop c7. So um, Hans is trying to block it with queen e6, but it doesn't seem to have because takes, takes bishop d6. He's losing the c5 pawn and being pawn down plus white has this incredible passer with the bishop on c5. This looks hopeless. And this is the fourth game. If Hans loses this, then it's match over. Yeah, yeah, then uh, we have taken the match. So Hans needs a miracle, but I don't really see him escaping. I mean, how can you escape this position? If you play, I mean, black's only way to, to get closer to the d7 board is to go e5 and then e6, but then run into d6 check. But it doesn't really help at all. There's just no way to get to the d7 pawn. So, White can slowly play rook d6 anyway. And yeah, but hang on, okay, so Hans in a lot of trouble here. However, I'm seeing that Levon is doing some. Good for Hans, no? I mean, yeah, with exactly. On basically, basically, he's draw dance here because, okay, this is not designable. The king, not only white, yeah.